guys, it's Lauren with Discover Double Bass. Today I wanted to talk about how to tune your instrument. Now there are many different ways that you can tune and some ways are better depending on what context or situation you're in. So this lesson is going to be all on how to tune your bass. So let's first talk about how to tune when you're by yourself, when you're alone in your practice room maybe. When I do this, I use a tuner and I tune using the open strings. And the reason I specify that is because sometimes people will tune using the harmonics, like the octave harmonic or some of these higher pitched harmonics up here. But the reason I don't use the harmonics is because the harmonics are slightly flat. I think people use the harmonics because those higher pitches are easier for their tuners to pick up. But if you can get the tuner to pick up the low frequencies of the bass, then you're going to get a more accurate reading if you tune using the open strings. Now also, I tune using my bow. Now if you don't use the bow, then just keep doing what you're doing and that's totally fine too. But if you use the bow even a little bit, then use the bow to tune. Um, using the bow is going to give you a more consistent tone and a more consistent reading than plucking. When the strings are pulled to the side, they change pitch. And so if you're able to use the bow, then you want to pull the string back and forth or pull the bow back and forth in a consistent um, long tone. And as I'm doing this, when I'm looking at the tuner, I'm not going to stop just to adjust the note. I'm going to keep the sound going and then reach back and change the, um, change the gears this way. Now, if your tuner is finicky like mine is, I have a Korg TM50, it's really, really finicky. And so even if you just change the bow a little bit too fast, then it'll kind of wobble a little bit. And so I want to aim for basically right in, the uh, right in the middle. But that's why I say you, it's a good reason to practice consistent tone quality with the bow for tuning and for many other reasons, but one of many. So then once I tune every single string, then I'll tune a couple strings together. So let me make sure my D string is in tune first. So right there, both of them are right in the center of the pitch. So now I'm going to tune using a fifth. I'm going to tune using the open D, I mean, sorry, the open G and the D harmonic. So I know I said I don't use harmonics when I'm tuning with the tuner, but I'm, what I'm trying to do here is tune the bass to itself. And so I like to use the harmonic on the D string, the octave harmonic, because that's the one that's going to be closest to the actual pitch. And I want to tune the bass to itself. So I'll tune each string separately and then tune the strings to themselves using this method. So now let's talk about how to tune when you're in a group setting chamber group, an orchestra, something where there's more than two or three players. And usually in situations like that, a tuning note will be given and you have to tune to it. So in an orchestra, the oboist will give an A. And when I'm in situations like this, then I use harmonics to tune. And I know that I said earlier that I don't like to tune the harmonics to a tuner, and that's still true. But when I'm in a situation like this, then the harmonics are a really good way to check my tuning. And I'll elaborate on that in a second. But first, let me show you what harmonics I use. Now, if you go to your instrument, let's find the A on the D string. So a fifth above the open string. So if you just touch the string, don't press the string down and just touch it, no other fingers, make sure no other fingers are touching the string, then you get a harmonic. And that is an A, and that is the A that you're going to be checking with the oboe if you're in an orchestra. So now, if you replace that with your fourth finger, then you can go across to the A string and put your first finger where the D normally would be. So it should just be, your hand should naturally be in a whole step kind of shape. You should be able to just go straight across with that first finger. And again, make sure no other fingers are touching the string. 
and you're just touching, you're not pressing the string down. So those two are the same pitch, and that's really convenient because you're going to be tuning the A to that given note by the oboe, and then you can check and make sure that your A is also in tune, the A string is also in tune. It's a really good way to kind of quickly go back and forth. Now, if you are out of tune and you need to adjust, then of course what I said about keeping the pitches going isn't gonna work. You're gonna have to actually stop and readjust because you need the fingers there to play the harmonics. And so this is true all uh, across all four strings. These pitches, or these harmonics, are the same pitch. So you can just go straight across. So I tune the A first. Make sure that's in tune. And then go across to the G and the D in the same position. It's just a different pitch. So you've got your fourth finger touching right over the D on the G string and your first finger touching right over the G on the D string. And then you can do the same thing across from the A string to the E. And then that's um, the easiest way to just make sure everything is all in tune. Now, like I said, usually I'm just gonna be checking to make sure that I'm in tune. So before I walk on stage or wherever you're rehearsing, before I sit down, I have my tuner with me. I take it with me wherever I go and I tune my open strings. So I use the same method right before I walk you know, into rehearsal, wherever that is, um, as when I'm alone in the practice room. And I also check my tuning after I get out of the car, if that's how I've gotten to the rehearsal, because um, sometimes, you know, the bass can get out of tune in transit. And so I'll tune with my open strings, and then with the, when the oboe or whoever gives the tuning note, then these harmonics are a really good way to just check and make sure you're in tune and also that the bass is in tune with itself. So I hope that this lesson helped. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the section below and I'll answer you as soon as I can. If you enjoyed this lesson and you'd like to learn more from me, please check out one of my many full-length courses available exclusively on discoverdoublebass.com, including one all on Boeing technique. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.